golden days, an enormous man lived with the other members of the Inuit tribe in a village. He was so tall that he could straddle the inlet and ate the whole whale just as other men ate a small fish. One day, all the natives were having a hard time to hold and keep their boats from capsizing. He rose and strolled down to the shore and scooped the whale and the boats from the water and placed them on the beach. You had better be careful, said the people, for a couple of huge bears have been seen near the village. Oh, I don't care for them. If they come too near me, throw some stones at me to wake me up, he said with a yawn. The bears came and the people threw the stones and grabbed their spears. The giant woke up. Where are they? I see no bears, he asked. There, there, don't you see them? cried the Inuit. What? Those little things? They are not worth this entire bustle. And he crushed one between his fingers and put the other into the eyelet of his boot to strangle it. Beth Gellert, Celtic Folk Prince Llewellyn had a favourite dog, Greyhound, named Gellert, that had been given to him by his father-in-law, King John. He was as gentle as a lamb at home, but a lion in the chase. One day, Llewellyn went to the chase and blew his horn in front of his castle to call Gellert, but he did not come. He was angry and left for the forest with other dogs. When he returned, he saw Gellert greeting him with blood in his mouth. He became suspicious that Gellert used to play with his little son, Prince Llewellyn. He went inside looking for his son. He could not find him. Out of rage, he killed Gellert. But later, he found his son and a wolf killed by his dog Gellert. In vain was all Llewellyn's grief. He could not bring his faithful dog to life again. So he buried him outside the castle walls within sight of the great mountain of Snowdon, where every passerby might see his grave. He raised over it a great cairn of stones, and to this day the place is called Beth Gellert or the Grave of Gellert. Peter of the Pigs, Portugal. Long ago there lived a man who employed a boy named Peter to take care of his pigs. One day a man came up to Peter and said, Sell me these seven pigs. Peter sold six pigs and buried the ears and tails of pigs in sand and called his master. His master ran. There he saw one of the pigs halfway out of the sand. He and Peter together soon pulled it out completely. To his horror, he saw six tails coming out. Run to the house and ask my wife to give you two shovels, cried the owner of the pigs. With the shovels, we can dig out the rest of the pigs. The boy ran to the house. He knew that his master kept his money in two big bags. So he asked for the two bags. His wife gave him both the bags after confirming it with her husband. Thus Peter received his master's two bags of money. But a robber took all his money. When at last Peter's master found him, he was dead. He said, Oh Peter of the pigs, you were sharp, but you found someone who was sharper. The Princess of the Lost Island, Portugal Euphemia was the daughter of King Atlas and the granddaughter of the great god Jupiter. She was more beautiful than her 15 sisters, though they were all lovely. She decided to come down to earth. Now in the island of seven cities, there lived a rich and venerable Christian prince. He adopted Euphemia as his own daughter. She was called Princess Euphemia of the island of seven cities. As soon as she came to the island, all pain and misery vanished from it. Euphemia herself remained always young, always beautiful. Two priests came to the city, but they returned to tell everyone about the celestial place. Next morning, the island had entirely disappeared. The water stretched before their gaze with an unbroken rippling blue surface. What has become of our beautiful island? The good priests asked in amazement. Euphemia, they say, has not yet disappeared entirely. She has changed her form. She is still found in the Azores in the plant called Solania. Thanks for watching. Do like, share, subscribe to Sahil Book House.